Eileen Limas, the CEO for Pay Prevention, proactive anti-violence education and consulting firm, uh, looking to uh, create a cultural shift and create safer workplaces. Um, one of the cool things about my job is talking to movers and shakers within the violence prevention movement, and that's who we have today. So welcome to Disrupting the Dominoes, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm with a uh, fellow disruptor, Stephanie Sear. So welcome. Oh, thanks for having me. Okay, so what has been going on? How are you during these crazy times? Please, please, let me know. I haven't uh, seen you in a while. Doing, actually doing well. Okay. In COVID, doing well. That's As you great. know, I work with university students, and we had to make a shift midterm online. Okay. And, of course, that was difficult, but it also brought opportunities, especially teaching empowerment self-defense. To have these students realize it really isn't all about physical moves. It's about mental strategies and learning how to take care of yourself. Okay. Yeah, you and I come to Empowerment Cells Defense kind of on the same way. We came from a martial arts background. Yes. And then, I don't know about you, I'll, I'll speak for myself, but convinced that if I just had enough physical prowess and I knew the right <laughs> moves and that, you know, I would be able to defend myself and everyone else around me. Correct. Um, and I found, you know, maybe in the last 10 years that, you know, that wasn't the case because of my involvement with elite athletes in sport mm -hmm. that had incredible physical skills but still weren't being able to set a boundary or identify coercion. Right. And so. that's, for me, it was working as an attorney by day and then at night going to practice Taekwondo and just taking it out on the mat. Right. I mean, sparring was my thing, and I was definitely <laughs> taking it out on the mat. Nice. But then, the next day, I'd go back in the office, and here I am in a white-collar mm. professional setting. I was the only female in the group, and I was experiencing what I now know were microaggressions, mm. um, sexism, uh, at one point what now right. is considered a sexual assault. And I, would, I didn't know how to take care of myself. So all that physical fighting was doing me no good in the office. Yeah. So we both came to it quite in the same pattern. We've, we've gotten okay. to this spot uh, for a lot of the same reasons. Okay, great. So I'm going to get to our questions. Okay, let's go. Okay. Um, what does a, you've kind of touched about it already, but what <laughs> does a safe workplace look like to you? Uh, well, where... You are comfortable to have your voice, to and voice meaning um, your opinions matter, your work matters, um, you can present it, there's boundaries set, you know clearly uh, what is, your responsibilities are uh, in that workplace. And uh, learning how to listen, listen to your colleagues, listen to your boss. Very important and it's not in many workplaces. Mm, very cool. Very cool. Okay, so how has your life changed um, or your path shifted uh, since you've joined, I'll call it the movement, right? Uh -huh. um, so we both started in martial arts, which what we thought were, you know, we were on a path to teaching people self-defense, right. but it shifted. So since you've joined this empowerment self-defense movement, what has changed for you? Uh, well, I came to it in an interesting way and a lot has changed. But before I met the founder of the movement, Yudi Sadiqman, uh, which is a phenomenal force of nature, uh, <laughs> I, um, I was doing the martial arts. And I was an assistant coach. And what started happening is uh, the, these students who were black belts, who were competing at a high level, would pull me aside and tell me a story and ask me what they could do. And... Being a certain mind, I'm always a researcher. So I'd say, I don't know, but I'll get back to you. And I'd start doing research and looking up these people who are part of the movement. Uh, and if they had an evidence-based study, it had to be evidence-based. I'm an attorney. I have to have proof um, that it works somewhere. Then I'll present it. And then I'd present it to the students. And I went from Taekwondo to uh, Krav Maga, Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai, other ways to move my body okay. to stay safe. And it all started with the students. But I thought I was alone. So I thought I was kind of doing this in my bubble. 
it was not, it was forbidden by my Taekwondo mm -hmm. grandmaster. He called it muddying the waters when I knew I was helping a student, but we were, it was hush hush. Don't right. talk about it right. on the campus. So I finally started doing a little more research and I heard about this ESD um, group getting together and I just said, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna meet them, see what they're all about. And then I realized I found my people. To have that moment where it's your horizon broadens and you realize there's all these people out there, we all are want the same thing and guess what, we're also basing it on the same platform. Um, of it's not physical moves, it's the mental right, uh, right. Str uh, strategy primarily. So that was, for me, it shifted everything. And while that shift was going on, on my campus, the head of the department, the kinesiology department, pulled me aside and said, students have been talking. They've told, you know, we've heard that you're helping them. So we're gonna fire <laughs> the grandmaster <laughs> and we're gonna offer you the job. Wow. And as you probably know in Taekwondo, holy cow. Yeah. So in my martial arts world, I got blown up for a while. Right. Um, oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. It's okay, it's all, I <laughs> yes, feel like I've gone in the right direction, right. Arlene. Okay, great, great. <laughs> but talk about disruption. But, but I, I, you'll, you'll appreciate this, but I see a lot of, uh, uh, several parallels between m how martial artists handle things and how empowerment, self-defense founders and the elders in the movement mm -hmm. handle things. Martial artists are very, you know, close to their vest, and you know, you can't go mm -hmm. to train at anyone else's school. And right. we have the secret sauce here. Right. Um, and I don't know about you, but almost every style has a front kick, a side kick, a round <laughs> kick. I mean, it's a handful of techniques. That's it. Right. Uh, you know. And so, what's the big secret? You know, why shouldn't we want to get this uh, out to as many people as possible? Mm -hmm. And I think, just my opinion, um, I'm seeing a little of that kind of holding close, holding tight to, to what you're doing, even though there's really no secret sauce right. um, in the empowerment self-defense movement as well. Um, uh, but you with are. that said, you know, with huh. that said, um, there has been tons of great work in these individual silos all around the world, all definitely in the U.S. and now all around the world because of ESD, the creation of ESD Global right. and the partnerships of other people. I know with PAVE, you know, we're hoping to work with everybody. Right. You and, know? and it's interesting you say that because that's something I feel so strongly about. Um, you know what? There's different flavors for different folks. Right. Right. So, and I say this to my students, you look at, go do your research. Yes. Go check out different instructors. Find someone who resonates with you. Who's going to, you know, turn the light bulb on for you? Who's, who, who will you, do you have that um, connection with? And I definitely, that's something I want to make a point of is saying, okay, when people ask me about instructors, or they move? They move out of the areas, how right. it starts. I want to be able to recommend someone. I want to say, go to the ESD instructor. Yes. Here, you know, you're going worldwide. You're going overseas. Well, guess what? There's somebody out there, too. And go try. Yes. Work with different people. And for us, we feel like we want to impart at a corporate level. We want to, we want well, to go into a business or a corporation and impart this training. And then if there are people who we've gone through our programming with and they say, hey, I love this, I want to continue, or I want my daughter to do this, then we can say, hey, if you're in Los Angeles, you want right. to train with Stephanie Sear, or you want to train with Magdalena, or you want to, that's right. what we feel our intersectionality can be between PAVE and the individual ESD instructor. Right, there's so, so yes. there's so much connection. I, would, I wanted to let you know, I have my students, so we go on Zoom, and I like to go wherever the discussion leads, it went to workplace. So... Because, yes, so because they <laughs> did not need to be in class, and these students are putting themselves through college, they picked up their hours, and they were having issues in the workplace, and we started talking about safety in the workplace, things you can do. It is, I mean, it is so needed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is absolutely needed, but so it comes from both sides, so it can work with the, your ESC instructors can start prepping yep. the students, because I said, it starts in the interview process. You know, you've done your research, you've gotten, you have the interview. When you walk in the door, you're interviewing them. You, you know, you started right. already to. I mean, we envision 
when a business eventually is PAVE compliant, mm -hmm. that we're part of the onboarding program, the process for a new employee, that there's we're built right into the training where you learn where the break room is and how, you know <laughs> how you learn to check your vacation days. I would you love know, that. When I was working goes, in the yes. professional world, I mean professional, <laughs> right. white collar world, right, right. I would have loved that. Um, but I mean, that's that's absolutely. our goal. That's our that's our right. vision, right? Okay, so um, do you see a benefit of these human safety skills? We're kind of touched on it, <laughs> being pulled into employee or workplace training. We absolutely. Kind of talk about, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Right. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's so needed. Think about there's issues out there right now, Arlene. Like yeah. Salesforce had just had a major issue. Yep. I mean, I literally wanted to pick up the phone and say, ah. <laughs> Call pay. <babe. laughs> Call pay. Exactly. Right. Like there's, an, there's a solution and it's in your best interest business. If you're just bottom line about the money, it's in your best interest. There's liability. Right. There will be a lawsuit. Take care of this now. Take care of your employees. Yeah. We feel that we can hit on so many you know, so many of the training resource dollars that companies can have, right? Absolutely. If it's yeah. com uh, employee engagement or if it's in risk mitigation or right. if it's in health and safety. I mean, you know, just give us 2 to 5% of that budget. Right. And we will show added value. I know. Absolutely. I know. We, I know. We, I know we can. And you can at the universities, too. Great. Great. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So do you have an experience where these skills could have been used or a success story on how these skills have been used for you? Well, for me, I can say in the workplace, just stopping, interrupting uh, what was happening to me and saying it was not okay and removing hands mm -hmm. and walking out. And even though I... I knew I was going to walk away from what was um, a fantastic career opportunity. I'm worth more than that. Mm. And that's what I did. Well, I'm sorry that that had to happen, but good for you that you did it. Right. But, and but, I'm framing it as right. a success story. I mean, yes. and. Yeah, well, it is. And you're doing right. fantastic things now. And <laughs> Thank you're you. going to empower a lot of people. Thank you. Okay. One right. person at a time. Yes, yes. <laughs> and we're thinking one business at a time. That's, you, all, that's how we're looking go. at it. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So have you ever witnessed or experienced a drop in productivity at work due to violence? And that can be from microaggression to full-blown violent events. Um, I, I would definitely say it was, it was very subtle. Um, very subtle, but yes, definitely a drop in productivity suddenly people calling out mm -hmm. now with what I know, I know what it was, right. but they weren't reaching out mm -hmm. and I didn't have the tools right. to help more than say, are you doing okay today? And they'd say, I'm fine. I'm like, okay, I don't think I should push harder. And then they stopped coming into work. So talk about productivity. One person was suddenly gone. There was yeah. definitely a dip. Yeah. So, and that's how we, that's where we see we have value as well, right? Because, you yes. know, so much, so much money goes into training an employee or finding that employee and then training them. And then, you know, maybe the clients that they work with now they're gone or their job is suffering, they're tardy, their absenteeism, right. you know, because something, and when I say something, this could be something that's a violent event that's happening at home. But it's impacting yes. work. Yes. Or right. this can be a violent, a violent series of microaggressions that they're dealing with at work. Right. Um, but, I mean, we really feel, and I'm, you know, I know that you know this, that we can prevent an event, we can help you address it in real time, and we can help you heal from it. Right. And that's what makes what we do so powerful. Mm -hmm. um, so, Yeah. Right, I'm doing a lot of healing work right, right. now. <laughs> good. Yeah, that's good. I'm, but it can be heavy as well, but good. Well, that's right. You have to make sure you have self-care. <laughs> right, right. You know, I, I, I say quite often that I feel these violent events, again, from microaggression micro to full-blown event, rob us of so much as a society. Yes. You know, it robs us of being the best father, the best mother, the best boss, the best whatever coach and um we yes. should be tired of it we should be tired of it already right so. i think some of us are yes or we're, we <laughs> maybe we all are but there's some speaking up <laughs> right 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 okay all right so this is the last question this okay. has been awesome 
Okay. Um, if you could convince one person, mm -hmm. uh, if you had the audience of one person uh, that would help move our movement forward, who would that be and why? That one, I always go with whatever comes into my head first because that's usually from my gut, my mm -hmm. instinct. This one's so easy. It's Michelle Obama. Okay. And I will tell you why, because she listens. She listens, and I know she, she's, she would be honest of what she could do to help or not help her, ask the questions, dig deep, um, number one person I'd go to. Awesome. awesome. Michelle Obama, please. Right. Let's talk. Michelle Obama. <laughs> please. <laughs> we, served for, we served for one year together in student government at Whitney Young High School Did you together. Did really? Yes, we oh went to the gosh. same high school together. Come on. <laughs> when you were Michelle Robinson, come on. Um, yeah, that would be uh, fantastic. Uh, right. And, and, you know, I'll be pushing for that type of connection now that I'm back home in Chicago. So, you know. There are um, these powerful yeah. women to yeah. reach out to. Ab yep. Absolutely. I, I'm about to name a fast second, <laughs> but I won't. <laughs> well, this was awesome. I appreciate you giving us time. I know that you're doing a lot also within the academic movement. We hope to partner with you uh, on some exciting uh, things, uh, projects. That would be Moving fantastic. That. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yes, this, this was awesome. This, this was, was awesome. fun. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> Disruptor Stephanie Sear, and did you want to talk about your new uh, work project as well? Well, I I've just um, kind of rebranded myself as Strength Within Self Defense because it's just most important to me that people realize they have it within themselves to stay um, safe. safe. Yeah. And they and they don't know that. I get that time and time again with students coming to me. Yeah. Uh, so I, I like to work with groups. I like to work with individuals and help them find their own power. Yeah, that's great. I mean, we, even when we're talking to C-suite individuals, you know, the approach to violence prevention and safety has been, you know, let's put an extra set of lights in the parking lot. Let's put a panic bar on the door. And all those things are great. And I'm right. glad that they're thinking of those things. But until we create the skill set within the individual, we're still going to fall short. We need the skill set in the individual. So good luck with your new venture and Thank what you. you're doing. Um, and we'll be looking for it. And we hope to partner with you in, you know, many projects moving forward. I look forward. forward to it, Arlene. Okay. Thank you All so right. much. All right. Thank you for joining us for Disrupting the Dominoes. <laughs>